We're Larry Freebie this morning here at the Midwest Dream Car Collection, and Larry's been uh, one of our volunteers since we opened up, and Larry's also been very gracious about loaning us some of his cars over the past year. We had Petunia, uh, his 1930 model, 31 Model A, until just recently, and we just now replaced it uh, with his 1929 Ford Model A Roadster truck. And I've asked Larry to come and talk to us about his truck this morning. And so, uh, Larry, I'm just gonna let you kind of start and share with your truck. First, I guess, how did you get interested in Model A's? I know you've got a lot of Model A's. And, and... I have five Model A's. I, I started getting interested in Model A's when I was in high school. I had a very good friend that had a 31 Coupe that he drove back and forth to school. And I rode to school with him quite often because I liked riding in the Model A. He let me drive it one time and I was hooked for life. Well, I've heard that Model A's are a real uh, fun car to own. I've never owned one. I know there's a lot of people that do have them, and, and there's a lot of them out there, so I'm assuming there's a lot, they're easy to get parts for. And is they're there, very easy. Is, is it kind of a good car if you just getting into the collector car field? Is a Model A a good car to have or not? It is. It, it, it doesn't cost in a, a, a ridiculous amount of money to get into a Model A. You can spend a ridiculous amount of money on them, <laughs> and I have on occasion, uh, this one included, but uh, uh, you can get into them fairly reasonably, and they're a lot of fun. I know you just acquired this truck just recently, within the last six months, I think. It hasn't even been yeah. that long, is that correct? So tell us, how did you find this truck, and how did you know you wanted this truck? Well, one of the other volunteers here at the Midwest Dream Car Museum had told me about the truck. It was, in, it was located in Rossville, uh, Kansas, and I went with him to look at the truck. It was in pieces at that point, but the paint was essentially done on the back portion, the main portion of the body, uh, was done. It just wasn't hooked onto the frame yet. Uh, and it was beautiful. The bed was done. And when you get around to the bed, you'll see what that looks like. I won't be throwing a toolbox in there anytime <laughs> soon. So do we want to walk, walk around, tell us a little bit about some of the things on the truck and what we're looking at? Uh, sure. Um, sure. So why don't we just start here since we're in the front? And... Since we're in the front? Okay. Uh, normally on the, the, these are actually referred to as an open cab pickup. The, the slang term is the Roadster pickup. These came with no top. There was, there was you had, the top was an option uh, and it did not fold. The reason it didn't fold was because if it did, it would intrude on the cargo area of the vehicle. So it was either on or off, but it did not fold. Normally, the open cab pickup would not have the uh, chrome or stainless radiator shell or headlight bezels. These would be painted black as were the fenders and, and horn and regular features of the vehicle. You could still start it with the crank if in fact your battery was too low for the electric starter to start it. Now did these all come standard with electric starter? Or was they, that, did. they did. They did by then. Was, that, start, that was in 1927 actually with the last couple last year of the Model T that they incorporated an electric start and carried right through to the Model A. Some of the, well, we might as well start on this side. There have been a couple of modifications to this vehicle. The main one that you notice first of all is there's no generator. This has been replaced with an alternator and a 12 volt system. Uh, this makes it a whole lot easier to start. It's not quite original to the vehicle, but it does make it a lot more drivable. These would have been a six volt originally. These would have been six volts, yes. This is the starter. This rod here goes up to the inside of the vehicle for a foot pedal that you would step on to start the uh, electric starter, which is hooked directly to the battery. When you get over here, you'll notice there's no rubber pad on the running board. These were stamped steel. Uh, a lot of times they would put uh, a step plate on here that did have a rubber pad so, you so it wouldn't be quite as slippery getting in and out. I know these are black. Is it, did I read somewhere where on Model A's the fenders and that were always black? Fenders and, run and running boards were always black. There were nine colors that you could, optional colors, but the uh, the, the fenders and running boards were always black. There's a very good reason for that. 
These fenders were not painted in the 20s. They were dipped and one wire went through a bolt hole right back here that suspended the fender. The whole thing was on a chain that dipped it through the paint, came back out, and the black dries the fastest. They painted both sides of the fender at once. It came out smooth on both sides. Every once in a while, on an original paint job for a Model A, you will see a run every now and then. That's nothing to be ashamed of. In fact, that's, that's uh, a feature that after. Might, might get you a little extra money for your vehicle. <laughs> Inside, these are these are simply uh, a vinyl covered cardboard uh, that, that uh, in this would not have had a carpet in it. It would have had a rubber mat. I have a rubber mat for it, but I like the carpet better. There are not very many features to the inside of the Model A. This. This uh, lever on the, on the left side of the steering column is the spark advance. Uh, this, it doesn't have an automatic advance on the distributor. So this turns the, turns the distributor. The, uh, the lever on the right side of the steering column is a throttle lever. And if you look at the accelerator pedal down on the floor, when I push down on the throttle pedal, the accelerator pedal uh, operates. The pedal right next to the accelerator is simply a footrest pedal. You put your foot on that and you can, you can uh, as you step down on the accelerator pedal, you can control how far and how fast you push down on the accelerator pedal. It has three speed non-synchronized non transmission, so occasionally you do have to double clutch it. The windshield wiper is manual and this one happens to be mounted upside down. It goes up here. But this, it was already here when I bought the vehicle, so I left it there for the moment. In the, on the instrument cluster, this is where you put the key in to start the vehicle. This is the gas gauge. That liquid in there is the gasoline. The gas tank is right on top of the car, on top of your feet. We have a, a, a amp meter over here. It tells you if your battery's charging or not. Speedometer and trip odometer. That about covers the uh, gauges on a, on a Model A. Now I have a question for you, Larry. I didn't believe that I that trucks of this vintage had door handles on them. I let you had to open them from the inside. Is that correct? Was that an after, after item? The 1928 open cab pickup, you did have to open from the inside. However, there's a knob up here. But by 1929? 29, they put it on the outside okay. for... for uh, to satisfy some complaints. <laughs> now, would this have been for the top if you had a top fork? Yes, the, that bolts on, and it's a support arm that goes up to the top bow. You'll also notice that this has 19-inch wheels on it. These are 1930-31 wheels. The 28-29 wheels would have been a 21-inch wheel, which is taller and has a much smaller hubcap. The bed is oak. Henry Ford was, was pretty clever when it came to wood products. He, uh, everything that he shipped, he shipped in, in uh, crates that were cut to the size for the beds of the pickup. So you tore, took the uh, chipping crate apart and the, those, were the, uh, those were the floor beds, floorboards for the bed of the truck. No waste. No yeah. waste at all. Uh, on the, <clears throat> the normal wood would not have been oak. It would have been ash. But the oak looks much better, so that's why it's there. Now the side rails that you have on the truck, are is that uh, uh, the way it would have come or has that been something that the mm -hmm. farmer or somebody would have added? The, these would have been added by the purchaser. In fact, I made these myself out of bed rails. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it looks good. Thank you. Now, this color is really beautiful. It's deep red. Is that a factory color? It is. It's called Ford Maroon. It's just a very simple name for the color. It's just called Ford Maroon. This color uh, had a tendency to fade out fairly rapidly. 
and uh, got kind of chalky looking. This one uh, has a clear coat on it, so it will hopefully stay nice for a lot longer. When wire wheels, um, I know you talked about the size of the tires and the wheels earlier, were wire um, standard when the truck came off the factory or would that have they, been in they the were, they, that These they they would have been wire wheels. Uh, this truck over here has the uh, 21 inch uh, wheels on it and you can see it has a much smaller hub cap and they're uh, a couple inches uh, larger in diameter. And also on this one it has the side mount tire. It does. I don't notice it on your truck. Is there a spare? No. For this? No, would it there's have not on one? this. And it wouldn't, it, the spare tire would have been an option on this vehicle. Now, when Petunia was here, she did have a side mount. I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah so, so, no getting a flat on this one. Well, if you did, you could, you could break the tires down with two screwdrivers, fill them full of dirt, and get home, and then get a new tube. <laughs> This is where you put the gasoline in a Model A. It's right on top of your feet. That would not pass the safety standards in today's economy. Ralph Nader would not like that. No, he certainly wouldn't. On this <laughs> side of the vehicle, this is actually kind of the business side. What's all this working down here? Okay, there's, uh, there's a gas shutoff for the uh, gasoline that's up here. There's no fuel pump on a Model A. It's all gravity. Uh, this is a sediment bowl. When you open up the fuel line, fuel comes down into the sediment bowl of the, into the bowl, excuse me, the bowl of the carburetor. And this, uh, like I said before, this is the choke lever. And you can see that when you pull back on that, that's what chokes the carburetor to start the vehicle. Also, you can turn it and it adjusts the amount of gas that goes in. But the other thing that I wanted to point out on this car is that on the hood ornament, the flying quail, you'll see that in the middle of the flying quail, there's a thermometer. That is actually the heat, that is the temperature gauge on a Model A. From the driver's seat, you can see that and if the red gets up into that window that's right here, it's starting to get a little warm and you might have to slow down a little bit or add some radiator fluid or even stop and let it cool off for a bit. Thank you again for coming and sharing about your 1929 Ford Model A. Open cab pickup. Open cab pickup. <laughs> well, thank you, Larry. Absolutely, thank you, Doug.